Howdy, howdy, banjo lovers. What I have for you today are three licks that I'm calling Reno-esque, for a lack of a better term. They're just kind of using uh, basically just more than one string at the same time, giving it a chordy sound to it that I really like. And the first one sounds like... Also, we are going to ignore the fact that my hair is really messy today. It's really frizzy, and there's nothing I can do about it, and I don't have time to fix it. So, yeah. First lick sounds like this. And a little more slowly. First phrase of that lick sounds like this. And that's really just a walk up on the fourth string, except that I'm kicking it off with this quick little grace note that starts with two and three together with your two fingers. And you're gonna go immediately to the second fret fourth string that you're fretting with index fingers. So that'll sound like this. And I like doing that at the beginning of walk ups like that within tunes, like within licks, even at the beginning of a tune really. But it just kind of gives it a little extra energy um, and punch to it. So there's that little grace note. You're gonna go from two, to th two and three together to second fret four and then go to middle finger of left hand on third fret four, and then scoot middle finger of left hand up to fourth fret four. So again, that whole walk up sounds like this. Next phrase. So you've ended with your middle finger on fourth fret fourth string. You're gonna slide up to fifth fret fourth string and put your ring finger on 4th fret 2nd string. Everything else is open. And with that slide, you're gonna play 4, 2, 4, 3, 2. So this is what we have so far. Next phrase. So you've ended here at the 5th fret 4, 5th fret 2, you're going to slide down on 4th string down to 3rd fret 4, and go ahead and bring your, your ring finger with you and that'll go to 3rd fret 2. So you'll play uh, 4, 2, 4, 3. Uh, this is what we have so far. Next phrase. So again, you're going up to the 5th fret 4, 5th fret 2, and you're going to play 4 and 2 together. And I would use thumb and middle for that of right hand. Take it down to the 4th fret 4, 4th fret 2, and you're going to pinch that again, 4 and 2 together, and as you do that, slide down to the 3rd fret. And then the last little note here is the, um, you're just at a C chord and you'll pinch four, three, and two together. And here's the whole lick nice and slow. And I know you guys like to hear real life examples of um, places you can put these licks. So I'm going to play through one that it works nicely for, which is I'll Fly Away. Um, but really, many bluegrass tunes that are played in the key of C, you could probably find a place to punch this one in. And um, here we go with I'll Fly Away. This will give you a general idea. First phrase sounds like this. And what that was was a slide up on the second string from the 10th fret 
up into the two finger version of a bar shaped G at the 12th fret. So I have a ring finger on 12th fret first, middle finger on 12th fret second, and as you slide up from the 10th fret second string, you're going to play this roll. Two, one, five, one. Again, nice and slow. Next phrase. So what I did there is I just scooted that um, two finger version of a bar shaped G down to the 11th fret one and two, pick that one and two together with your two fingers, and then down to the 10th fret, do the exact same thing, and then follow that with five, one. And this is what we have so far. Next phrase. And what that was was a walk up on the third string, ninth fret, tenth fret, and then go to, I was really just playing the top three strings of this, but it's a D chord, so it's an F shaped D, and I just played um, fretted one, two, three, and played the third string with my thumb, and then one and two together with your two fingers. So you can see what this lick is doing is going from a G chord into this cool G7 and then into a D. Um, so it, it starts in G, ends in D. Um, so it's a really nice little segue lick that you can use any time really that um, there's that, that transition. So again, here's the whole lick, nice and slow, and then I'll put it into a tune like I did with the first one. So here it is nice and slow. And here is an example of a tune you could try this in. This is Your Love is Like a Flower. So I'll play an up the neck break to that and you'll hear that lick when it comes in. Sounds like this. Today's banjo tidbit is one that leads from G to C very nicely, and it sounds like this. A little more slowly. And the first phrase sounds like this. And what I did there is really I've just got a D-shaped G chord, and I'm just not really messing with the first string. You don't have to fret it. You can if you want to. Not going to make a difference. I am not fretting it. You're going to take that and scoot the whole shape back one fret, and I'm going to pinch four, three, and two together, and as I pinch, I'll slide the shape back up into the G chord where it belongs, like this. Once I get there, play four followed by two and three. So four with thumb, two and three with the two fingers. So again, nice and slow. Next phrase. And I just took that back, um, one fret behind the, the G chord, pinch four, three, and two together, and then put it back on the G chord and pinch four, three, two again. So here's what we have so far. Next phrase. So this time I scoot it over and I'm now focusing on the one, two, and three of a D shaped G chord. Scoot that whole thing back one fret and you're gonna pinch three, two, one together and as you do that, slide into the G chord like this. So this is what we have so far. Next phrase. So all that was was I go up to the 12th fret with my pinky, pick that with middle finger, and then I'm going to do this little walk down, um, kind of like a little tiny little melodic line that is 9th fret 1st string, 10th fret 2nd string, and you'll play a 1, 2, 5, and that's it. That's when you would kind of go into C, whatever you're, you plan on doing in C. So that's the whole lick. Let me play it nice and slow for you.
And now that you know that lick, you get to kind of hone in on the more exciting and super important details that have to do with dynamics. And for this one, you're really going to have to pay attention to, first of all, right hand placement needs to be up close to the fingerboard. It's going to give it that really cool, old-fashioned sound. Um, and then the other thing is knowing when to let the notes ring and when to kill, kill the ring. Um, so I'm going to play through that lick one more time, and this time listen out for that as I do, and then I'll just go through phrase by phrase and tell you exactly which ones you want to um, sustain, which ones you want to kill. Sounds like this. So that first phrase sounded like this. When you slide in with the 4-3-2, you're going to let that ring. Then you're going to follow that with the fourth string, let that ring. And then you've got two and three together, you're going to kill the ring on that one. And then the next phrase, you kill the ring for both of these uh, notes here. So this is what we have so far. Next phrase. So as you slide in on the one, two, three, let that ring. And then you go up to the 12th fret one, and you're going to kill the ring on that one. And then the little walk down at the very end is all just regular let it ring. And one example of a tune you could use this one in would be Nine Pound Hammer. And I think this lick works pretty nicely moving from a low break into a high break. So I'm going to use this lick to kind of be that segue, and that would sound like this.